Hello. Uh, today in my shop, uh, I had an emergency job show up uh, actually yesterday, and I need to finish it today. Um, it's repairing a pulley, a timing belt pulley, that's used to drive a compressor. Uh, the customer has a, um, I believe it's a pump driven by a diesel engine, and on that engine is a compressor. And the compressor is used to draw a vacuum in the pump to keep it primed. And I believe the pump runs 24 hours a day. And overnight, I guess a, a few weeks ago or whatever it was, um, the pulley on here came loose. Uh, the Woodruff key that holds it in place uh, broke out the keyway in the pulley. And then the pulley just spun on the compressor shaft till the next morning when someone came in. Um, to check on the machine. So it buggered up the, uh, the bore of the pulley and uh, actually, to be honest, doesn't look like it damaged the crank at all, but they ordered a new crank for the compressor and they ordered a new pulley and the crank and pulley came in. I think they waited four weeks, something like that. The, uh, it came in and the pulley was wrong. So they took it back to the supplier and the supplier told him, well, we can order you another one. It'll take another four weeks and there's a really good chance it'll be wrong too, which is the current state of supply chain issues we're having right now. So they came to me and asked if I could fix it. Um, so this is the repair. Unfortunately, I started working on it before I realized this would probably make a good topic for a video. So I've already bored out the damaged bore. Um, and I bored it out quite a bit bigger than the, the original hole in the shaft. Um, this is the crankshaft that it mounts to. You can see it's tapered. It has a Woodruff key. And my plan, it's a pretty rough drawing, but was to bore out and then turn up a, a plug essentially that I could press in. And then I would bore out the taper hole and then I have to cut a tapered keyway too, because that keyway runs parallel to the taper of the bore. Um, this is gonna be an interference fit. And the, the reason I made the hole in the pulley so much bigger is because the distance between the keyway and the edge on the plug when it's finished, if you make the hole too small, it gets pretty thin. And I was worried that this part may crush inward slightly if it's too thin and then you would lose the holding effect of the interference fit. So I've gone out to pretty much an inch and seven eighths whereas the hole at the large end is what do we got here roughly about an inch. So I've gone about seven eighths of an inch oversize and uh, hopefully the thickness here will be enough that there's a good interference here. Um, I may also do one other thing. I may put set screws here, here, and possibly here, two or three. I drill it and tap the hole right centered on the interface of the press fit and screw a set screw down. Um, that acts kind of like a key and uh, should give it a bit of extra holding power in case the interference fit isn't up to the task. I suspect the interference fit will work though. I don't imagine the torque loading on this is all that high. Um, so anyways, I've got the first step done. I've bored the pulley out to 1.873, uh, which will allow me about a 2 thou interference fit and I will make the plug 1.875. Um, my plan is to make the plug completely, including um, cutting the keyway and then pressing it into the pulley afterwards uh, so that if I bugger it up, I don't have to press it out of the pulley. I can get a good one <laughs> completed, test the fit on the crank, and when I'm happy with it, then install it in the pulley. And, uh, it should be good. Um, the job's a little more 
complicated than it appears because I have to set up the correct angle on the compound rest to bore the taper correctly. I then have to make, I have a brooch. It's a quarter inch wide keyway. I have a brooch that'll fit. Um, sorry, it's a quarter inch brooch that I have, but I have to make a tapered brooch bushing. And uh, so it's an extra part that has to be made. And of course it's tapered. So it's just, there's always added complications when you're dealing with tapers. You can never measure a diameter anywhere properly, etc. Anybody who's cut them will kind of understand what I'm talking about. Anyways, I'll get on with it. Well, I'm at the point where I can set the angle of the compound rest to match the taper on the shaft. I talked to my customer and confirmed that this is the crankshaft they're gonna use. Um, so as long as I can pick this angle up, the uh, pulley should, should match pretty close. Um, the way I do it is I just put a dial indicator on the compound rest and I'll put the stylus here and it's important that you get it on the um, vertical center line and then you just stroke back and forth and tap this around one way or the other until you get uh, zero reading across the length on the indicator and at that point your compound rest is at the same angle as the shaft. You can see there that I've lined the center of the stylus ball with the um, center of my live center uh, just by eye, but that should be close enough to get an accurate uh, uh, taper off that shaft. Now I calculated the I calculated the angle that it should be and uh, just so I could rough in the compound rest and I got 3.52 degrees. So I set the compound rest at approximately three and a half. Um, dial indicator is touching and now I'll just move the compound rest back and forth. I'm gonna hold this. And oh shit, that's pretty close. That's only half a thou out. Um, that doesn't happen too often. Uh, anyways, I will correct that. I'd like to get it zero. So I will just tap the compound rest and try again. Uh, to read uh, that indicator and determine which way you need to tap the compound rest to correct that, Look at the indicator, and because it's swept to the left, it means that the uh, the stylus moved out or towards the center of the lathe. Now, if that moves out, that means that as the compound rest was moving along, it was moving out away from the shaft, from the taper which means that the angle is a little bit too high and we need to tap the compound rest. Let's say the back end of it needs to be tapped over this way. And that's the direction I'll tap it to correct it. And I'll just look at the dial so I have an idea whether it's moved or not. Um, much but we will see ah. See, 
No, it's, uh, we'll just correct that and I'll, I'll head back in the same direction. I took that measurement coming in the opposite direction as the first one. So let's zero there and we'll go back the other way and we'll see. And I think we'll find that I actually moved it about twice as much as I should have. I'm now half a thou in the other direction. Well, in the end, I got it down to about a tenth. I think that's probably good enough for this job. So I'm gonna quit while I'm ahead and, and leave it at that. Well, you've jumped ahead in time here a bit. Um, it's a, a rush job and I don't have a stand for my camera and it really slows me down to try and hold the camera in one hand while I'm running the machines with the other. So I didn't show any of making the plug with the tapered bore in it. Uh, that's it here in the, in the chuck. That's pretty straightforward work. It's just turning. There's plenty of videos showing that on YouTube. Um, this is the um, bushing for the uh, brooch. And it's, uh, it was machined with a taper as well to go in. And then a slot was cut in it to hold the brooch. And you can see that it's at about a three and a half degree angle, which is the angle of the taper. And one of the things I hadn't figured out when I started this job was how I was gonna hold that and run the brooch through with my hydraulic press when it's at that angle, how I was going to you know, make a bit of a ledge with an angle so that the brooch was straight up and down. It could be pushed straight up and down. That's all a hydraulic press can do. And then when I had it in the lathe and I was just sort of test fitting stuff, I realized that with the compound rest at the same angle, I can push with the compound rest and it'll actually push the brooch parallel to the slot in the bushing. And the uh, plug can just stay in the lathe held with the three jaw nice and straight. So I haven't actually tried it yet. I'm going to. I'm hopefully the lead screw can apply enough force. Um, but we'll find out shortly. Oh, I gotta put that down. Well, the job is done. Um, my idea to use the compound rest to push the brooch in kind of worked. Uh, it worked to get it part way, far enough that it would fit in my hydraulic press, and then I pushed it the rest of the way with my hydraulic press. <laughs> and then, as it would be, the hydraulic press was getting low on oil, so the cylinder was getting spongy. So the last few inches I had to put it back in the compound rest and push it through. Anyways, it worked. Two passes was enough. Uh, one pass with um, the tapered um, bushing. And then a second pass with the same tapered bushing, but the shim to uh, force the teeth out. And that's all it took was two passes. So, so that worked good. Um, my original plan was I was gonna drill right on the split line and put set screws. I thought maybe three set screws here, here, and here to lock it in. However, when I went to press it in, oh, we got a hell of a thunderstorm outside right now. I can hear the rain on the roof. Um, when I went to press it in, the um, it took all my press had. My press is a 10-ton press, and it, it took all 10 tons to get that in. So, I think press fits are always a bit of a crapshoot when it comes to calculations. Um, but I think it would be reasonable to assume 
that if it took 10 tons to push that in, it would take 10 tons of force applied tangent to the where the fit is to cause it to spin. And the diameter of the press fit interface is two and seven eighths. And when you calculate the torque created by applying 20,000 pounds of force at a diameter of two and seven eighths, you end up with a, just over 2,300 foot pounds of torque to cause this to turn in the pulley. Um, see what all the noise is about. Oh, yeah, she's coming down. There's the water under my door, both doors. Well, the rain can compete with the crickets. I have a shop full of crickets, and at this time of the year, they're all trying to get laid. So it's just a non-stop cacophony of crickets. Well, it's the next morning. Um, I had to stop recording there because the thunderstorm was so loud, the rain was so loud, that I didn't think you guys would be able to hear me. Um, and then it went on for over an hour. Uh, so anyways, um, I was talking about the ability of the press fit to resist the torque that's applied to this and uh, I think I'd said that it was uh, about 2300 foot-pounds of torque is what I calculated it would take to cause this fit to slip. Um, I don't know what type of torque this uh, compressor requires to drive it. Um, the crankshaft looks similar to the size of the uh, one in my compressor that I have in the shop here and that's a five horsepower compressor running at 750 rpm the crank speed um, so if I assume to be conservative that maybe this is a 20 horsepower compressor four times what mine is um, running at 750 rpm that comes out to 140 foot-pounds of torque which is 1 17th what I've calculated that this can hold so it's you know using those numbers I'd have a factor safety of about 17 to 1. So even if my calculations are out quite a bit based on the assumptions I made, it should still be more than strong enough uh, for the job it has to do. So, um, well, the customer should be here shortly to pick this up and uh, another job completed. Thanks for watching. Bye.